Good evening. Welcome to Progressive Soup. My name is David Stevenson. I'll be tonight's host. Tonight we have Alfonso Robinson, who blogs and does videotapes as a Hat City Blogger. And you can find him on the, on the web. Hatcityblog.blogspot.com is an easy way to find it, or you can Google his name or Google Hat City Blog and find him that way. Now, we wanted to talk about um, what the context of, what, what your role is within the context of, of today's media, what the role of the, um, of the video, videographer, if you will, what, what your role is within the context of today's media. Well, let me just roll back a little bit and uh, start from my origins. Um, before I started Hat City Blog, I did another website called Connecticut Blog. And um, that started in early, early 2005, not 1990, early 2005. And one of the first things I did with the blog was follow Ned Lamont and his campaign against Joe Lieberman for the primary. And in that particular campaign, the role of videotaping was paramount in getting Ned Lamont's message out to the media. Because, um, as you well know, the mainstream media didn't do a very good job in the beginning stages of the campaign of following him around. So that's where the online media is, is, is plays a vital role. Or citizen journalism plays a vital role in picking up the slack where the, the mainstream media leaves a void. Now, in terms of Danbury, um, we had the Danbury News Times, and prior to the Bowden administration, the Danbury News Times did a relatively good job in covering local politics, uh, covering what was happening at City Hall. Um, recently, over the last few years, that, that the, the, the amount of media attention and amount of quality reporting at City Hall has diminished, which is where my site has City Blog has come in in terms of covering City Hall, reporting back with commentary, and more importantly, videotaping meetings so people have an honest and, um, what should I say, people have an opportunity who didn't attend the meetings and only get their information from the media, mainstream media, to actually see the, the meeting in its entirety and from their own point of view. What is the state of today's, uh, what we call mainstream media? Well, um, the state of the mainstream media in terms of print journalism has diminished uh, significantly. Um, the Hartford Current filed for bankruptcy not, uh, not so long ago. The Christian Science Monitor um, has stopped publishing their print uh, edition of their paper and have decided to go on to online media. Online, yeah. So. Um, a, a print media, their subscription and their readership has gone down significantly over the years, and, and, and also in this present economy, you know, um, it's getting harder and harder and harder to publish print media. Well, so many, many people have noted to me that they, all of a sudden, one day, the size of the paper shrunk by about two inches oh, on, yeah. the, uh, on, the, uh, on the crosswise measurement of the News Times, and uh, that's that seems to have affected, certainly by, by a far sight, the amount of content which shows up in the, uh, in the print version. Not only that, but the, um, the, uh, the number of reporters that they have has uh, shrunk. They have fewer reporters. They rely a lot more on um, 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 very, generic, very generic stories that are coming from other, other sources. Yeah, and I, I, I guess, a great example of the News Times, why I like to talk about the News Times, when I first came to Danbury back in the late 80s, mm -hmm. um, you had great reporters working for the News Times, like Valerie Roth, who was an excellent reporter. I think she actually won a Pulitzer Prize for her coverage with the Dyer scandal. Mm -hmm. um, really, really good, hardcore, hard, what I like to call hard news, or what my journal journalism teachers taught me is hard news journalism. Um, you had beat reporters, and a beat reporter means that you have a reporter that did a specific, the state went to, was in a specific area. You had a beat reporter that just stayed at City Hall. His, only, his, his or her, her only assignment was to stay at City Hall and cover that stuff. And what happened now is that you don't have those quality reporters doing that. You don't even have beat reporters as we used to have back during the 90s. You know, back during the 90s, you, you, you can actually go read the News Times and read about what happened in the ad hoc committee. You don't have that anymore. So where that void is now is where I like to try to pick up the slack and show people, you know, I have my own point of view, which is to a progressive point of view, but I like to 
go and tape the entire meetings and post them up on the internet so people can watch the entire meeting and just form their own opinion. So there's no, uh, no filtering of the uh, news. So if you're doing, say, a 20 or a 40 or a 60 minute um, videotape of a meeting, you're not doing any editing and you've got the full meeting up there so that people can watch the full meeting and, and draw their own conclusions well, about? I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Um, it really depends upon what meeting we're talking about. Mm -hmm. If it's an ad hoc committee meeting, yes, I will put up the entire ad hoc committee meeting because that's the only topic being discussed in that meeting. Okay. So I'll put the whole meeting up there. Now, if it's a common council meeting, it really depends. Um, either I'll put the entire common council meeting up there, but again, who's going to sit at a computer for like an hour and a half to two hours to watch the entire meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a specific topic being addressed in the meeting, I'll put that entire topic up from the beginning until the vote so you can see the entire discussion. Um, but in any event, you, you are seeing something that you don't normally see or don't normally read about in the paper. So instead of reading a point of view or a spin that's being done in an article, mm -hmm. you can actually see the entire event as it happens, sometimes in real time, on my website. Well, that sounds a lot better than just um, getting a reporter's or even a newspaper's opinion of what took place in a meeting or what was said in a meeting and, uh, you know, seeing the whole thing, it seems like, would have, um, would, would give people watching the full, the full flavor of what was discussed and um, the facts, and they can draw their own conclusion based on their own point of view, but they can, they can certainly get the full flavor of, of what's being discussed. And uh, that seems to be preferable to, to getting sound bites. Well, I again, I, you know, I have a, a certain point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a very hardcore progressive. I come from a progressive family, you know, and um, I take a progressive point of view upon certain topics. And I like to call out people when they mislead the public. And so I will formulate my own opinion in my post. But the one thing that I do get a lot of credit for from people on both sides of the political aisle is that I might formulate my own opinion, but I always back it up with like either documents from the meeting or putting up the entire video of the meeting. So you can see, you know, I'll have my point of view, but I'll let you make your own point of view also by putting up the, 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 vi the video of the meeting in its context. So, you know, uh -huh. it, 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 it gives people a lot more information as versus a newspaper where you just get a couple of sound bites from what person A and person B. And in some instances, the reporter doesn't even leave his desk. He'll just pick up the phone, get a couple of quotes, type up an article, mm -hmm. And that his, that's, that's, that's your front page news. And I don't think that's really informing the public about what's going on in city government. And there's a lot of stuff happening in city government that's that not being reported. And I think that people, especially right now since we're in an election year, you need to have a, a well-informed public so they can make a well-informed choice on who they want representing them here in Danbury. Certainly having been in an election last year myself, I know quite, it's quite factual that, that a, a reporter will call you up and they want to hear a 15-word statement. They want to have a 15-word statement that will fit in with a certain amount of space within the paper and then they'll write the story around it. And they generally get the quotes right, but it's hard sometimes to fully expound on what you're wanting to talk about or even what you're being asked about in a, in a short period of time. Well, and you in certainly, some, in yeah. some instances, they'll have the article already done and then they'll come to you for the quote. And they'll to maybe, maybe ha look for the quote to, to, to match the article. To match the article. And, and I don't think that's a proper way of reporting. At least that was not that was not the way I was taught to report. I was always, always taught, if you're going to do a news story, especially on a certain topic in local government, you have to go to the meeting and cover the meeting. Sit there, cover the meeting. After that, you get quotes. And then you form your story. You don't sit by a desk, pick up the phone, take a couple of phone calls, or even worse, you get a story pitched to you by a politician, and then you write the story based upon what the politician is pitching you. And That's not informing the public. Yeah, certainly they can say something different to the, to the media after the fact via phone that might be completely different from what they actually said at the meeting. And what's even worse is that the reporter won't know that because in most instances the reporter is not at the meeting to get the actual quote. 
So you basically, you're, you're just getting spent. You're getting spent from one party, you're getting spent from the other party, and what's being, what's being missed in the middle is what's actually being talked about in these meetings. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started going down to these meetings and actually recording what's going on that mm -hmm. people will sit back and say, wow, that's actually what was said? Wow, that's, that's a lot different than what I read in the paper. Or, Thank you very much for informing me about that. Or better yet, if it's a, something that has to do with planning or development, they'll say, thank you very much for letting me know that this, this development is being proposed in my neighborhood. Now I'm going to come down and voice my complaint about this. Let's look so. at the other side, the, uh, the potential. Let's, let's play devil's advocate for yeah. a moment and uh, talk about since anyone can be a citizen journalist, regardless of their point of view, what pitfalls, potential pitfalls, do you see in citizen journalists? How, how are people going to um, filter what they're getting from f citizen journalists, which, which of course they have to do, they have to filter what they're getting from uh, corporate media outlets. How are they going to filter what they're, what they're getting from citizen journalists other than watching the entire show? Well, I, I think what's most important is, you know, you have to be aware of where you're getting your information from. Like, for instance, you know, if you're going to watch Fox News, mm -hmm. you should know that Fox News is going to be putting the spin on anything. And you should understand that before you turn to Fox, just like when you turn to MSNBC or CNN or the New York Times versus the Washington Post or the Washington Times. You have to understand what type of media outlet you're dealing with. Now, with citizen journalism, um, you should be aware of the individual that you're getting this information from and make sure that's somewhat of a credible individual. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for instance, myself, I make no bones about who I am. Uh, I put the information about who I am on my website and I, I, I provide as much information as possible for the people to make a, a, a proper decision upon any topic. Now, you might get people who might spin stuff one way, you got might spin stuff the other way. You just have to make sure and double check that what they're saying is actually accurate. Now, you covered the, um, the Tea Party a couple of weeks ago at the Danbury Green. I, I was there also, and, and my point in being there was I was looking for um, individuals that had the points of view that I would normally expect to find uh, the smaller government individuals and, and people that seem to have a lot of, um, a lot of anger directed at um, President Obama, where in fact, over the last eight years, the same type of wasteful the type of spending, the same type of um, trillions of dollars being put out there, of course, in the case of the last eight years, it would be for, um, for um, a, a war based on lies, for welfare for the rich, and for um, um, the first government bailout. Um, and those folks didn't seem to be around during those uh, six years that, that George Bush and, and the Republican Party, in his case, right. control Congress. Uh, people didn't seem um, to care too much about wasteful spending back then, but all of a sudden now we've got Barack Obama as president and, and these folks seem to be coming out of the woodwork right. as if nothing ever happened prior to. There had never been a dollar ever wasted or, or, or badly placed money ever before in the history of the United States government, all of a sudden there is. But uh, I was looking for, for a, at least a couple of people to come on this show that could, they could um, talk about that point of view in a calm fashion. We could have a good discussion, but that was my purpose for being there. Mm -hmm. Give us some thoughts about uh, what you observed when you were there at the, um, at, at the Tea Party. Well, it's, it's quite simple. I can, I can sum this up. Well, I can sum it up in a few seconds, but I'll try to expand it a little bit for the purpose of this okay. show. You've got about, <laughs> a, about a half a minute now. So half a minute? So let's, let's get started. Okay. We'll, we'll, do, we'll, right, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. Right, we'll continue. I'll, 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 let me just start real quick. Basically, um, I find it, as you did, quite amusing that these people who have not been around since in the first six years of the Bush administration where we're spending a, a, a boatload of money um, and blurring the lines between church and state, uh, wiretapping Americans illegally, might I add, um, where were they during all these years when we were spending billions upon trillions of dollars and then suddenly in the f 100 plus days of, Ob of the Obama administration they come out of the woodwork screaming that Obama's spending their money and I just said to them well, where have you been? I haven't seen you around in a long time but um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain on that a lot more after the next okay, so I'm going I'm to say it in advance but I'm not going to leave it to you to say because I'm going to say it yeah, sure. that there was more than a little bit of racism involved in what's going on with these tea parties and, and the complaints yeah. about Obama but we'll, we'll talk more about that when we come back sure.
today's young volunteers are doing their part to make a difference in our world. We have only one earth and we have to take care of it. I teach people about recycling and other environmental issues and encourage them to be involved in saving our planet's resources. That's why I volunteer. When I teach computer skills to other kids, I'm helping them succeed in school and in their future. I show them that learning about technology can be fun and make a difference in their lives. That's why I volunteer. I research the dangers of tobacco use and form the Anti-Tobacco Action Club at my school. I recruited and trained other kids to be advocates and leaders. What started as a local project has grown nationally and internationally. I'm passionate about my volunteer work. I know I make a difference. If you know middle or high school students who make a difference by doing volunteer work, have them ask their school principals about applying for a Prudential Spirit of Community Award, or encourage them to call 1-888-450-9961. Welcome back to Progressive Soup. I'm David Stevenson, tonight's host. I have Alfonso Robinson with me, who blogs, who videotapes events, um, political events, uh, town council meetings, uh, all types of meetings that should be of public interest to people that are interested in learning more and becoming more involved in their local uh, local government issues. Um, I wanted to note that um, my one of my purposes for being there was I wanted to find um, folks that um, that could later on come on the show and talk clearly and precisely, but in a calm manner about the issues that, 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 are, that are involved in, in, in the Tea Party, mm -hmm. in the Tea Parties that have been, um, been, been set up. But um, I did find two young men, and I'm going to try to get them on the show as soon as I can, that were very good at uh, enunciating their point of view. And, and we had some wonderful discussions. With, we disagreed on a number of issues, but we had some good discussions. And I'm going to reach out to them and, and get them on future shows because it's important, I think, for us all to talk about these issues from all these different perspectives and um, find points of agreement and, and find points uh, where we disagree, but disagree respectfully. Yeah, uh, yes, again, um, I'll, I'll be real brief with this. You know, I, I've been to a number of these events, and you can call it Tea Party Movement. A, t a year and a half ago, it was an anti-immigration rally. The same people who were there at that rally are the same people at this Tea Party thing. It's just another way to angst out uh, or just express a certain amount of anger towards a certain amount, uh, to a certain type of movement. In this case, it's the progressive movement. Uh, they're angry about immigration. You know, they're not, it's not illegal immigration, it's immigration, period. Um, they're angry that a Democrat is in charge of the White House, a progressive is in charge of the White House, and, and some people, um, an African American. They try to label as a Muslim. You know, we saw one person who made it a point to say the word Hussein as loud as possible to that's describe Barack Obama. Obama. That's that's We're on the mainstream you media. Know, and, and we have we have people who are so called ministers who talked about people in California being nuts and fruits. So, you know, we kinda you can read between the T lines here. Um, again, my purpose there is not to comment on these people, um, not not at that particular time. My my point there is just to document what happens. I want to document events, videotape events. So when I do have an opportunity to comment about topics such as that Tea Party movement or Im immigration or any other topic in this area, I'll again express my point of view, but provide the video for you to watch for yourself, or at least provide as much information for you to form your own opinion. So you have a point of reference when you're discussing those issues, and of course, the watching and videotaping these events, you learn an awful lot. No, you not learn just, an awful not, lot. Not just things that are, that, are, that are frustrating, but you learn a lot about um, I mean, you, you learn a lot about human nature, and, uh, and you learn a lot about the good in people, even people that have different points of view. Right. Well, again, bring it back to City Hall again. You learn a lot about how government works when you videotape this stuff and you document it and put it on the and put it on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for a very I, I as long as a few other people in, in the Danbury community worked very hard to try to get local government television put on TV, so everybody could see what's happening in the City Hall. Because again, it's very it's very difficult and it's very disheartening to know that a lot of the reporters at the News Times don't actually go down to City Hall, at least in the past, they didn't go down to City Hall and cover these meetings, yet you're reading these articles, or, you, or, or, or but even worse, they're not being reported upon. Um, 
so I felt it was very important to have these meetings put on TV. And since they weren't being put on TV at the time I started my website, I made it a point to go down there and cover these events so people can have a better point of view about what's happening. So for instance, if you have a diner, like Elmer's Diner, pop up on Peyton Allen Road on North Street, yeah. people were not, people were out, oh my God, how can this diner be put on North Street? It's an awful location. How can this even happen? Or when you find out after the fact that BRT got a seven year tax deferral for a big complex on Crosby Street mm -hmm. that turned into a college dorm, people were in outrage. Like, how could that happen? How could they get a seven year tax deferral for, for a condo? Yeah, that, was in, that was in the papers oh, recently it, about uh, the, that that was not yeah. the intended usage no, as they expressed it to the city before they uh, and, and before they built it. Yes, and, and, and the and the thing is, you wouldn't know that because back when it was actually being proposed, the News Times didn't cover it good enough. Mm -hmm. Or when he or when Mr. Bertram changed the spirit of the whole agreement between himself and the city, the News Times didn't report it good enough. What I did is fill in the void. I actually recorded all those meetings. I went to the Planning Commission meetings. I recorded what happened there. I talked to the members of the Common Council who agreed to give the tax deferral, who felt that the BRT reneged on them. And I got their point of view, and I put that up on the, rec I put that up on the website so people can actually see what's going on. And that goes way beyond what mainstream media can do, it's doing. But that doesn't mean mainstream media couldn't be doing this, and they can do this with the technology that we have right now. We have the internet, and a lot of these newspapers are, are, are expanding a lot more to the online medium. In fact, the News Times actually picked me up as a blogger. Mm -hmm. So now I'm actually blogging for the News Times. So I'm sharing my reporting with the News Times and giving people a point of view that they don't necessarily get in the newspaper articles. And it, it just, it's, it just makes out for a, mil, a, a more well-informed public. And because we, the, the worst thing in this election year, we don't want to have low information voters because having low information voters hurts us all. So it's better to be well-informed so you can make a well-informed decision about the people you elect into office. Certainly, so. as the newspapers um, seem to be ultimately going the way of the dinosaur and uh, numbers of reporters and the amount of coverage that papers can afford to, uh, to cover in order to fill their pages um, as that disappears. Certainly, you know, we, we talk a lot about grassroots things and things percolating up from underneath and uh, it, it, it applies regardless of what political persuasion. But um, the, um, the blogging media and the video videographers like yourself, taping events seems to drive at this point to some degree, mainstream media. Mainstream media, these, these uh, videos and these um, commentary end up out there exposed to people so they can read them and watch them. And uh, people start talking about them. And ultimately, the mainstream media can't ignore it any longer. Right. They have to pick up on it. Um, a great example was uh, back in 2006 with uh, George Allen running for Senate in uh, Virginia. And uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of a lot of things like this pop up in, in your videos. Right. Um, he made a remark about a young man in the audience that was videotaping the event and, right. and made a made a racial reference to that young man, and that found its way out um, through the um, the the, uh, the the internet, right. and pe a lot of people saw it. And ultimately, within a few days, it found its way onto mainstream media. Of course, they're they're. They become, I believe, increasingly lazy, and, and part of that, I think, is they don't have the funds, they don't have the circulation to generate the funds or the advertising to generate the funds to do a good enough job. But um, they, pick, they, they picked up on the um, on these uh, the, this, these events and started, as the mainstream media do, unfortunately, playing it a hundred times a day, right. and and brought out the whole thing, and and it uh, it, it, uh, it was something that wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened without a videographer there at the well, event. Let's, let's, let's go to the present day right now. We can talk about 2006 with George Allen, which was horrific. But let's talk about right now where we have a country in Iran that has shut down all the mainstream media, trying to kick the media, trying to suppress the press. And you have citizen journalists, kids with cell phones out there, recording what's happening, while you have state-run media saying one story, you got kids, kids with just pure cell phones. When I started back in 2006, I had a big camera. Yeah. You got kids now out there with cell phones and capturing that stuff and putting it up there on Twitter, which is microblogging, which is a whole nother range of blogging. Um, they're doing Twitter, they're doing Facebook, and now you have 
outlets here like CNN and CBS and NBC going to Twitter, going to Facebook, getting their content from citizen journalists who are risking their lives being out there on the streets, my the, the way that regular reporters used to do back when we only had our newspapers in order to provide right. information for us. They'd go into, into battle zones, right. they'd go into, into war and do all kinds of things above and beyond the call of duty in order to report information back to Americans. And I know that Americans, regardless of their political persuasion, have really gelled together on this, uh, this matter of what's going on in Iran and, and watching these, uh, watching and garnering information about what's going on there and uh, probably appreciating democracy maybe more thoroughly than, than they had before. Oh, absolutely. And, and at the same time, appreciating citizen journalists appreciating these, uh, these uh, blog reports, whether they be videos or whether they be uh, remarks made by people that are there right. as the events unfold. I think people really are appreciating the whole concept of citizen journalism a lot more than they once did. Well, even more, another thing I'd like to add is that you're getting another point of view from Iran, from, uh, you're getting another point of view about who, the Iranian people that you didn't get before. You're f finding out that these Iranian people are not the big evil people that were being perceived in years past, you know. Point well made, yeah. They're and they're that's something that we really need to take. Country, yeah, very young country, very uh, very young and very educated, very educated. Country, and uh, very appreciative of all the things that we're appreciative of here in America. Right, and I, and I hope that gets. I hope that gets onto the minds of the people here in America so we just don't think that Iranian evil, we need to do something about them. Because it's not just, it's not the entire country. Just like here in the United States, not everybody has a certain mindset or a certain point of view. We're a big melting pot. And we have to understand that. We can't just let one point of view uh, take over the entire discussion. So It's good to know, and that sort of thing kind of brings us all together as, as human beings, recognizing that, oh my gosh, people in another part of the world, they're just like me. Right. And, and that's, that's a very, very positive thing for us to be, be uh, aware of. Because it's easy to forget to the, the people that are somewhere else are, are just like us. They're people. They want the same things we want. They like the same things these want, we, that we want. They, right. they're, they're good folk. And, and again, this came through, this, this information got to us because of citizen journalists out there with cell phones using the internet to get their point of view out there so you can have another outlet besides the mainstream media to get your information. And that's what citizen journalism is all about. We have so much more to talk about. We'll have you back. Okay. And this has been great. Thank you, Al. No problem. Take care. Okay.